Je donne maintenant la parole. And I'll give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Ernest Roy Musio, head of the delegation of Rwanda. Excellences, heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to congratulate Ambassador Philemon Young on assuming the presidency of the 79th UN General Assembly and assure him of Rwanda's full support. As we conclude the 79th United Nations General Assembly debate, unity has been a central theme throughout this year's high-level week, and rightly so. Rwanda is of the view that in today's increasingly fractured world, unity is central to addressing pressing issues, most of which transcend borders and national interests. Contemporary challenges require ambitious and coordinated action that paves the way for equal access to opportunity, ensures sustainable development, and contributes to global peace and security. As we approach the second half of this decade, solidarity is key to achieving targets under Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Rwanda strongly endorses the UN Secretary General's stimulus package as a timely and necessary intervention to address the pressing, the pressing challenges facing the global economy and the most vulnerable populations. The package represents a crucial step towards creating a more equitable and resilient global financial system, particularly as developing nations continue to grapple with the impacts of climate change and widening inequality. For too long, African countries and other marginalized regions have borne the blunt of global economic shocks without sufficient support from the international community. This stimulus package not only acknowledges these disparities, but also seeks to collect them through targeted financial aid, debt relief, and sustainable development initiatives. By addressing structural inequalities and ensuring that resources reach those who need them most, the Secretary General's proposal is a call to action for global solidarity. It will empower nations to rebuild more sustainably with a renewed focus on green energy, digital transformation, and poverty eradication. Rwanda believes that now is the time for bold multilateral action, and this package is an essential step towards securing a more just, inclusive, and sustainable future for all. Mr. President, Rwanda commends the efforts by the Secretary General and Member States for convening the Summit of the Future. This summit and the adoption of the Pact of the Future are crucial steps in boosting action to protect the interests of present and future generations. Rwanda knows firsthand what division and fracture can do to a society, let alone a community of nations. In the aftermath of the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994, we Rwandans found ourselves at a crossroads where we chose unity over division for our own survival. This choice was not an easy one, but it was the right one and has defined Rwanda's post-genocide nation building ever since. The world now stands at a similar crossroads with a choice to make to choose unity for the collective good. This is what the Quibuka Frame of Hope monument in the memory of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, recently built in the gardens of this United Nations building, stands to remind the world. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, reports show that Africa is said to be the engine of future global growth 
in the decades to come. With the world's fastest growing middle class, estimated to encompass 1.1 billion people by 2060, Africa will take the center stage of global affairs. However, this feat cannot be achieved without the adequate tools to both finance the decarbonization of our economies and mitigate the effects of climate change. Building resilient economies in the global south is an urgent priority, which goes hand in hand with increased solidarity from those who are most responsible for carbon pollution. The pay-to-pollute model is not a viable option. option. Solidarity and investment are. Consequently, advanced economies should reduce their emissions faster and invest more in African autonomous transition. In a few weeks, the world will gather in Baku, Azerbaijan for COP29. The international community should seize this opportunity to pledge more green investments in Africa. Additionally, Rwanda encourages nations to join hands and conclude an ambitious global plastics treaty based on a comprehensive approach that addresses the full life cycle of plastics at the upcoming INSC 5 in Busan. We have a historic opportunity to demonstrate our collective resolve to end plastic pollution for the benefit of current and future generations. Rwanda stands ready to play a positive role in that direction. Excellences, esteemed delegates, the year 2024 marks two decades since Rwanda's first deployment of troops under the United Nations peacekeeping banner. Today, Rwanda is among the top contributors with deployment in missions across Africa. And yet, insecurity in our region has reached unprecedented levels. This is evidenced by the rising threat of radicalized insurgency in the southern part of the continent, terrorism in the Sahel, or the presence of state-sponsored genocide militias right by our border. Mr. President, no more than ever, cosmetic fix must, fixes must be avoided in favor of long-term solutions addressing the root cause of these conflicts. Security is on, not only achieved by silencing the guns. It is also achieved by building a fit-for-purpose global governance system capable of quickly adopting to crises. Reform of, the, of multilateral financial institutions is complementary to the reform of the United Nations Security Council, as both are crucial for creating a more equitable and effective global governance system. The financial institutions which shape global economic policies and the UN Security Council, which ensures peace and security, must evolve to better address the diverse needs of today's world. Without reform, these bodies risk perpetuating inequalities, particularly for Africa, which has historically been underrepresented in decision-making processes. Reforming both the financial institutions and the UN Security Council is vital to ensure fair representation, foster trust among nations, and effectively respond to the pressing challenges of the modern era, such as economic instability, climate change, and conflict. In this regard, Rwanda fully supports the reform of the UN Security Council to enhance its effectiveness and efficiency. Such reforms are necessary to address long-standing injustices faced by Africa, ensuring that the Council becomes more responsive to contemporary global challenges and dynamics. Only through these changes can we build a system grounded in equitable rules, unity, and solidarity. As we conclude this General Assembly, let us remember that history will judge us not by the challenges we face, but how we respond to them. The reforms we seek are not just necessary, but inevitable to ensure a future grounded in justice, equity, and solidarity. Rwanda stands ready to work with all nations, and we believe together we can build the world we want, one where no nation or continent is left behind. Let us seize this moment for the future of, for the future of humanity depends on it. I thank you for your kind attention.
Je remercie le chef. I thank the head of delegation of Rwanda.